Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about the concept of stability and we continue with the root herbert stability criterion and in particular we will design the controller gain to have a stable closed loop system. So let's move on with our example. So the situation is following situation is given. We have the gain here which is in cascade with our plant and we have the unity gain feedback configuration and the plant transfer function is shown here. What you see in the plant transfer function that we have two zeros at minus three and minus five, but we have two poles at one and at six, and both are at the right half plane. So this system is already in the open loop configuration unstable. So we need uh, some sort of a feedback control to make this system stable. So the value, what we need is the question in place here is determine the value of K such that the closed loop system is stable. So how do we start? Again, step by step, we follow the procedure as we did in the previous videos. First step is determining your characteristic equation of the closed loop system. Now that is done using the formula for a characteristic equation, which is one plus the loop gain is equal to zero. And the loop gain is determined by, you start at one point in, the, in your uh, configuration and you make a full circle and you multiply the transfer function. So you do K plus K times GS, which is the open loop transfer function. So if I now just substitute the values, I have one, then, then we get one plus K times the uh, op open loop transfer function, which is a zero. Now, if I now massage a little bit because I want to get rid of these fractions, I can multiply the right hand side and the left hand side of this equation by the denominator here. So S minus one times S minus six. Then I get the following situation. Again, this is not the final form I want for my stability, stability analysis because I want a polynomial expression with orders. So I want also get rid of this parentheses. So this is actually the following situation. I'm really close. I see already some, uh, some polynomial expressions and also in order, but I would like to also collect the like term. So that is actually, actually the following step. So in the final form, I have this situation. What you see is, I have now s squared with its own coefficient, s which is with, with its own coefficient and the constant term. And this is a second order polynomial, as you can see here. Now, this is our characteristic equation we, are, uh, we have worked towards here. So we have now the characteristic equation and we will now use this in the following step. The following step is generate your table, the route table for our stability. So this is the a second order system. And for the second order system, we have the following general table. Now, from the characteristic equation, we have the values of A1, A2, I mean, A1, A0, and those three values can be uh, determined from this characteristic equation. So if I now see the second order polynomial is written in this general form, I can look at the like terms, the coefficients, and I can determine what the value of A2 is, and also the A1, and also the A0. So if I look at the S squared, you have a coefficient in front, which is the A2. And if I just compare it with my own characteristic equation, that must be one plus K. So it is shown here. In a similar form, we have the A1 and we have the A0. Okay, now, before I continue, I need to check, of course, the first column. That is always the necessary condition for stability using root Hurwitz stability criterion. So before I can do that, I have to determine the values in this row. At least this value is necessary. So if I now do that first for B1 and B2, now for B1, you will use again the formula for calculating the B1 for this stability analysis. What you do is you make actually a matrix of these four elements and you make and you calculate the determinant of that one. You place a minus sign and you divide by this value, this entry. That is just a formula. You can, of course, derive this, but that's not the point of this example. Now, if you now substitute the values we have from your characteristic equation, you will have this uh, expression. And if you do the math, you will get step by step at 15K plus six. That's for B1. Actually, we are done, but for the completeness, I have also calculated B2, which is in a similar form, but it is now completely zero. So you will not have a problem with that one. 
Now, if I now substitute the values and make the table compact, you will have the following table. That's actually now our end result. So we have the 1 plus k from a to a k minus 7, which is just a1. And this is again, again uh, the a0, 15k plus 6. And this is now the new calculated value b1 and b2 was 0. So if I want to check or evaluate the civility, I will need to use the first column of this table. Now, if I now continue with the next step, which is looking at the value of k for stability, that's the step, step three. And I place the table we have now determined here for reference. Now, what we need is for the, uh, from the root table, we require the following condition. All of these entries must be positive and must not show any sign change. So I need to make this positive, this positive, and also this positive. So I need to have no sign changes at all to have a stable system. That requires actually three conditions. One plus K must be larger than zero. Eight K minus seven must be larger than zero. And 15 K plus six must be larger than zero. So I have three conditions. I need to meet, I need to satisfy these conditions all of these conditions. So I, I'm not uh, interested in one condition, but I'm interested in all three conditions. Now, if I now re, uh, simplify this, I can see that the K must be larger than minus one for the first condition. K must be larger than seven over eight for the second condition. And K must be larger than minus six over 15 for the third condition. Now, it is not really clear uh, what the required value of k is to satisfy all of the three conditions. So to make it a little bit easy and also visualize this in more detail, I can make, of course, a, a plot or a, uh, or a label for each condition here. So if I now make a drawing for the first and for the second and for the third condition of k, I can now say this value here, just start at minus one, this started at 7 over 8, which is shown here, and this started minus 6 over 15. Now, to make this condition sort of happy, I need to stay at this part of the, of the line. So, this part of the line is actually the green area. And this part of the graph or the line is the red area. So, I'm not allowed to, do, I'm not allowed to uh, go in here. And for this, in a similar form, I can be in this area, but I'm not allowed to be in this area. Now, for this condition, I'm allowed to be here in this area, which is green. For in the left area, I will have an unstable condition according to this condition only. Now, to satisfy all three conditions at once, I need to, of course, make a line at this part. Why? Because if I make the k larger than 7 over 8, then all three conditions are met. So this is actually the uh, term which will determine your stability in this case. So that means for the right side, I have a condition which is now okay, and that causes a stable system. And for the left side, that will cause the system unstable. So in, sh in, in, uh, in summary, for these condition, from this condition, we get that the k must be larger than 7 or 8. Thus, the closest to the system is stable for k is larger than 7 or 8. And as you can see here, from these three conditions, we have determined the condition which will make the closest to the system stable for sure. And you, make of, you can, of course, try to make the k exactly 7 or 8. That can be of course uh, a situation for marginal stability but it's not a situation for this we need a stable system okay that's this for this example i hope this clarifies the situation also for a second order system which is in its open loop configuration already unstable and we have in addition here also zeros in the open loop transfer function So let's now check our calculations using the simulation in the MATLAB. Now, first I will define a Laplace parameter using this command here. And I will now insert my 
open loop transfer function which has two zeros and two poles. So the pole zeros were at minus three and minus five. That's actually for this situation. And I have also two poles at plus one and plus six. Now, this is now the transfer function, G open loop transfer function. I can check this using the zero pole gain model. So I do the key and I check if this expression is correct, which is actually what we had. Now I can now uh, make a nice uh, analysis using the, one of the applications uh, of MATLAB. So I can use this control system designer that will allow me to check how my uh, system responds for uh, several values of my controller game. It will also show the step response, the root locus plot, the Bowley diagram of the loop transfer function that will be show the game margin and phase margin. So you, you have a lot of information in one picture. Okay, let's open that one. And that will now shown here. So I have now two screens next to each other, as you can see. So I have now a situation as follows. I have now the loop transfer function gain here, loop transfer phase here, the step response as shown here, and there is a, a root log plot here. But this is still empty, so I have to, of course, insert my system. You have an architecture here, so you can select several uh, forms of your feedback control uh, system. So I will choose this one, but you can also select this. You also see you have uh, multiple uh, feedback loop. So a uh, couple of uh, uh, options you have, but let's make it uh, a simple form. You have here four blocks. So this one is the pre-amplifier, which is in our case just one because we didn't have any pre-amplifier. So there is no additional uh, operation. This is the controller. So that is actually our gain K. This is our plant G. And this is the sensor, so that is also in our case one. Now, this is actually where you substitute the values. If I now make the F1, which is the preamplifier, and also the G1. And this one is just our open loop transfer function, but this is exactly the same name as the open loop transfer function here for our case. But if you have, of course, here D and other letter, you just import that. So if I now import this using this operation, I can go to G here and I can now say G import. So that will import the system in our application. So what you can see is we have the loop transfer function gain and also the phase. You see the phase margin and the gain margin, a lot of information is given. You have also the root locus plot. You can see here the two unstable poles at plus one and the plus six. You have the two zeros at minus three and minus five. And you also see the step response, which is, which is a, lot of, uh, just a lot of oscillations and also a very high overshoot. You can also check the overshoot by placing a, a label on it. So we have now the overshoot of very high uh, value. So what we need to do, of course, is make this uh, check our values of the controller gain. We had a controller gain of seven over eight in our analysis that causes the situation uh, to have an uh, uh, oscillation. Actually, at that point, you have we will have a marginal stable system. Before we do that, let's check actually the situation for this closed loop system. This. Uh, pink uh, dot here will show you actually, actually the exact location of the poles. So if I now change this, I can change also by using my hand, I also change the gain and also the location of the poles. So if I now export now the current value of the gain, I can just do export and then select C, which is the controller, in our case gain, and that will make the gain show in the command window here on the right on the left side. So that's just one. Now, if I of course change this using my using the hand here, you can see that the system responds to this also. You can see that the gain margin is changing, the phase is changing, the response is changing. 
everything's changed due to this location of the poles. So if I make it larger and I place it actually on the right half plane, that will cause, of course, an unstable system, which is also shown here. Now, I want to check, of course, that my value of 7 over 8 is correct. That was actually the boundary between the stability and instabil instability. So if I now place it uh, somewhere here and I now go to architecture again and substitute the value of 7 over, eight, 7 over 8 exactly. So I do here 7 over 8 and then run and this will run and update the architecture. You will see we have an oscillation actually in this form. So if I now get it with a label, if I now zoom in here, you will see there is a nice oscillation. At this part, for example, there's a nice oscillation, oscillation signal. So this confirms that actually the 7 over 8 is the boundary between the stable and unstable system. But the thing is, can I make it larger or smaller than 7 over 8? How do we confirm that one? Now, you can, of course, go again to your controller again and make it, for example, larger than 7 over 8, which is, for example, 2. And then check if this system is stable or not. So again updating and I will make this full view. You can see that this system is stable. It is not, it has of course a lot of overshoot but it's still stable. But if I now make it for example smaller than 7 over 8 and 7 over 8 smaller than that is for example 0 0.5 for example that and that will cause again an updating the arc sector you will have an unstable system. And that confirms actually that our Analysis of 7 over 8 is exactly what we needed. You can also do that in a command window. You can say, okay, my uh, transfer function for the complete system, I would like to know that also. So you can so do t, which is a total transfer function, is equal to feedback. And then your forward gain, which is uh, what we had 7 over 8. Let me first define that maybe, that's better. So k is equal to 7 over 8. And then t is our total transfer functions feedback. And then our k times the g. And times, and actually that is the first uh, part of the, end, of the feedback entry. And the second entry is the gain in the uh, feedback loop, which is just unity gain feedback, which so is 1. And I need to also place here a minus one for that this is a negative feedback. It is also not really necessary, this one. This is uh, a default set is always minus, but I do that always to make sure that this is a negative feedback. So if I do this, I get a transfer function there uh, for the closed loop system. This is the closed loop system transfer function. I can also do here now step, step T, just step T, and I can now see that this is also producing an oscillation, as you can see here. So if I now make this larger, can also see that this is also a nice oscillation. So there are other ways to check this, that your system is in margin stable form. And again, we have now checked that the k is equal to 7 over 8 is causing the marginal stability. Larger than that one, the system will be stable and the smaller than that one, the system will be unstable. I hope this clarifies also the situation using this simulation. So we have done first part the analysis we have calculated the required value of k using root Herbert's stability criterion. Now we have done this in also in a simulation and that confirms actually our calculations. If you have questions, comments or suggestions about this uh, example, please let me know. And I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your attention again and see you next time in a new video. Take care.